Welcome back to Mobile Dwellings where we build, live in, and tour homes you can take with you on the road. In this video, we're going to be installing this huge storage box in the side of this bus, kind of like this one over here. Boom, I already did one. I love projects like this where it's completely symmetrical and I get to do something twice because that means I get to figure out what the heck I'm doing before I make a video showing you guys how I did it. Look at all that space in there. This is a 60 inch long by 24 by 24 storage box that we locked out and found two of on Facebook Marketplace. We paid $700 delivered for the two with the brackets, which we are unfortunately not going to be using to install them. And here it is, I put one in. And of course the huge advantage to a rear engine, one of the reasons I love these buses, there is no drive shaft running through the center of and so we have a ton of space. Okay, so right here we have a piece of framing and it's like an L shape. And we also have one here. So we are going to bring the edge of our box to this one. That way we can access the bolts on the outside, making it pretty easy to install it. So with that being said, I'm going to start this whole endeavor, this whole layout, this whole cut by making a pilot hole right on the edge of this so that I know exactly the edge of where my box is gonna go at the height that it's gonna be. But before I do that, there's something I have to remove from the bus. So we have this rubber bump guard on the bus and unfortunately the center of it is exactly where we need our box to go. Well, that was really easy to take that off. That reminds me of the old demolition days when and everything you did was deconstruction and nothing was really of much consequence. It was so much easier back then. I mention that now because this next part is probably every schoolie converter's worst nightmare. Nobody wants to do it because it is of such extreme consequence and if it goes wrong, you are totally SOL. And I'm talking about cutting a huge hole inside of the bus. We're gonna clean this up, do a little bit of layout and cut a massive hole out of here. Once we do this, we can't go back. All right, next up, I gotta get underneath this bus and drill that pallet hole I was telling you about. So that hole right there marks the outer edge of where this box is gonna go. We are going to be drawing a nice square line based off that location to make a nice clean cutout for this box. What are you guys working on? We are gonna put this huge box in the side of the bus. Oh. <laughs> Help me do this job alone. I actually use these some of these rare earth magnets that I bought a while ago. You can get a pack of these, I'll link to them below. My goal here is basically to be able to do this install alone so that if you are alone working on it as well, you can pretty much replicate what I'm doing. So yeah, rear earth magnets, pick some up if you think you're gonna be doing this. With layout all done, next up is the very hard part. I recommend you don't procrastinate. You are not going to wanna do this. You will find so many excuses. Just get your tools, cut this hole. We of course are gonna need a little bit of PP, eye protection, long sleeve shirt, ear protection. I'm going to use a jigsaw to do this with a thick metal cutting blade. You can do this with an angle grinder if you are very skilled with an angle grinder. I think I get a lot more control out of the jigsaw. I would advise you to be very patient with yourself when you're making this cut. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna shoot hot metal in your face. You need the protection. I took breaks mostly to handle things that were annoying. Like they, these would grab my blade and then break it. So I had to go to the angle grinder to cut that section. Just, you know, this cut took me close to an hour, just so you guys know. Okay, so. I've got this box lined up. I know that side to side, at least at the bottom here, it fits. And Sam devised a method that anyone could use to pick up one of these boxes on their own. You all have it in your car, spare tire jack. I don't think you need to go much fancier than this. This is gonna get us tall enough, at least on our bus. So let's do it.
All right, so that's in there. It's a pretty good fit. I should crib this. I should support it from the bottom. I should. It's not going anywhere. I really should crib it, but I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to crib it. I don't think I'm going to crib it. I think I'm going to risk it. You should definitely crib it. Let's take a quick interlude and talk about mounting these storage boxes. Now the correct way to do it, the way that the manufacturer recommends, is being installed with their bracket. This is a really robust, thick steel. I mean, that thing right there is a beast. That's how you're supposed to do this. The problem with using that is the following. So this bus right here at the skirt is 12 inches from the ground when it's raised up and driving and the airbags are full. Now the fuel tank and the fuel tank mount sits a little bit lower. See that right there? The bottom of this is, I believe, 10 inches from the ground. Now the total amount of space inside here, from here to here, is a little bit more than 23 inches. However, these boxes are 24 inches. So we are now lowering the ground clearance on this rig by about half an inch to an inch, as you can see right there. Now the bottom of this big bracket right here is two and a half inches deep. So we would be essentially adding another two and a half inches underneath this, making it half an inch lower than the fuel tank. We really don't want to do that. We don't want to lower the ground clearance of this bus anymore. Even putting these really tall boxes in is a little bit risky. For better or worse, start out with, this is how we are mounting the boxes. We have simply hung them from the frame rails with Unistrut. You can see that one right there. And you can see this one right here. This box is not going to fall off the bus. I can promise you that much. However, I believe this is 16 gauge steel. So this actual box is not that strong. If you put a thousand pounds in here and then you expected this box to stay kind of like stiff and formed long term, I don't know if you could get away with it. I'm not sure. This isn't like a tow truck or a tractor trailer. We don't need a thousand pounds of tools. We just need some fluids and some tools and some outside storage and some camping gear and some chairs and things like that. We could put Unistrut down here as well, and we could use all thread to clamp this to this, therefore giving this support. And we could also do it underneath this as well if we wanted to and just lose, I think Unistrut's like half an inch. That's what we could do. We're not doing it right now. We're gonna figure out if it's necessary. And of course, to wrap this up, a lot of people doing school conversions, they do a lot of metalworking. They get a welder, they have fun with it. I just. I don't know, it's not my preference. So the correct way to do this, obviously, if you don't want to use that huge bracket, is to just take some angle iron and build yourself a box and build yourself some supports and weld this thing to the frame. We're not doing it that way. I think I can get away with this. All right, moving on. Sorry about the rant. I'm so tired. Take it out. Okay, so all of our holes are drilled. Man, that is tiring. The next thing we have to do, because I showed, like I showed you, we can access the two bolts over there and the one bolt in the back, but we can't get to this front one. We need to drop this so that I can get the bolt down there and then try and guide this back up through the bolt. So next up, we gotta cut some Unistrut. Well, I got lucky. My bolt is right in the middle of two slots. Now that I've gotten all the bolts secured, the unit strut up, I'm gonna drop the jack. And that way, the weight of the box and probably me laying in it is going to create friction, which will keep this, these bolt heads from moving. And I might be able to get them extremely tight on my own, or I might need to grab a second set of hands to hold 
a wrench on the inside. Here are a couple of things to note. We used inch and a half long, three eighths thick, galvanized bolts, nuts, and washers. This is definitely not coming off of here, but as you can see, it was just four bolts and unistrut. If it seems like these boxes are gonna flex over time, which I'm really not seeing, we will find a way to support this from underneath. The beautiful thing about converting a bus into a home is that you really get to do it the way you want. There's no real prescribed way to do anything, and there's several solutions to all problems. So here's one for you. There is a storage box in all of its glory. Mm, look at that. What a beauty. Days and years of not having comments is finally over, so you can drop your opinions below if you'd like to, and I might respond to you. Thank you guys for watching so much. Catch you next time. Peace.